Because both DNA and RNA are really important to protein synthesis, we will begin with a review of the structural similarities and differences between DNA and RNA. So recall from Unit 5 that DNA is a nucleic acid found in the nucleus of the cell and it is made of two strands of nucleotides wound together in a spiral called a double helix. Each nucleotide is composed of a sugar molecule known as a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate group, and one of four nitrogenous bases, either adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. The alternating sugar phosphate molecules form the backbone of each strand in the DNA double helix. The nitrogenous bases extend out from the backbone toward the center of the double helix, forming the rungs of the DNA ladder, and each base in one strand is matched with a complementary base in the other strand in accordance with the base pairing rules. Adenine always bonds with thymine and guanine always bonding with cytosine. These characteristics are the same for the DNA of all organisms. What makes one organism different from another is the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA and the number of DNA strands in the cells of each organism. For example, a human cell has a total of 46 DNA strands in the nucleus, whereas a pea plant only has 14 DNA strands. These differences in nucleotide sequences and number of DNA strands are responsible for the genetic differences between different organisms. Unlike RNA, DNA is confined to the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. RNA is a nucleic acid made of a single strand of nucleotides. Each nucleotide is composed of a sugar molecule known as a ribose sugar, a phosphate group, and one of four different nitrogenous bases, adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. RNA can be found in both the nucleus and the cytoplasm of a cell, and there are three different types of RNA you will learn about in this unit. There are two really important points that I want to emphasize. First, notice that DNA has the nitrogenous base thymine, which is not found in RNA, and RNA has the nitrogenous base uracil, which is not found in DNA. It makes sense then to note that whenever you're looking at a genetic code with thymine in it, that genetic code belongs to DNA. And likewise, whenever you're looking at a genetic code with uracil in it, you are dealing with RNA. The second important point to note is the fact that DNA is confined to the nucleus of the cell, yet is responsible for controlling the cell functions, most of which occur in the cytoplasm. How then do the instructions provided by DNA get from the nucleus to the cytoplasm of the cell? We will find an answer to this question in the videos that follow.